if you want to keep your valuables safe and portable, check out this Negrini case. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I just bought this. It's kind of like the modern briefcase. I remember when briefcases used to be all supple leather and then have combination locks. And this little bad boy has a combination lock right there. But what I like about it is that this thing will close and it doesn't have two combination locks. So it makes it a little easier to get into when you need to. So I want to give you a quick tour of this, show you the case in depth because I'm actually really impressed with it. And then show you how the combination lock works and how you can set a new combination. It's really cool. This Negrini case says made in Italy, shipped from Michigan though, and the material here is really cool. Now, even though it's from Italy, it is not fragile as far as I can tell. It seems to be very robust. And like I said, I'm not sure what this material is, but it feels like hard plastic, you know, polymer or nylon shell. It's got a little texture to it, which is nice. Kind of keeps fingerprints and smudges and probably hide scratches. It's just got a nice look to it. And it's got a matte black finish. As you can see here, it's got some nice thickness. Now, why I picked this up is because it's bigger than a lot of the smaller locking cases, you know? So for example, here is a concealed book safe. And what you can see here is it's just like nine by six inches. It's not that big. If you want to put something in there, anything from sidearm to valuables, to birth certificates, to passports, to car titles, what have you, you know, it's just going to be a little small for putting a lot of stuff in. And this one will allow you to put a lot more stuff in. It has two piano hinges that are riveted on there on the sides. Let me give you some exterior dimensions here. First of all, it is uh, 15 and a half inches wide. It is total 10 and a half inches tall and thickness. It is just about three inches tall. So that's going to give you a lot more space inside to put stuff, which I like. And then also a really nice handle here. Obviously, this is going to be dead space inside there, but a nice handle here. So if you want to carry it with you, take it with you on the road, it's going to be much easier to carry than like a lockbox like this, which does not have a handle, right? So on the front here, we have two metal latches, which is just going to help keep it closed. There's nothing lockable about them, kind of your standard briefcase locks. But then inside here, what we have is a combination lock. Now, this one looks just like the briefcase locks that I remember from my youth. And you just pull that button to the side there and it will unlock it and you just have a three digit rolling combination there to open it up. Now, one thing that I want to show you here is that this can be reprogrammed. So I want to show that to you here right now. Now, what you can do is you pull it to the outside, obviously to move that plunger in to open it up. But when you have the combination in there correctly, the current combination, you push it in, now it goes into setting mode. So if I change the combination here to 100, now that combination is 100. So if I close it, lock it up like that, I can open it on 100, but if I close it and I move it back to 000, obviously it's not going to open. So you will want to pick a combination that you can remember. So I push that in now, I can change it to 000 again, just like that, and now it will open. So that's how you reprogram the lock. It's really easy. I remember those from my briefcase days. I like the fact, again, that it's just one combination here. So many times on briefcases, you would have the same combination on both sides. It was kind of stupid. If someone knew the combination, they could open both locks. And so it was just kind of a nuisance to have both locks locking so it's just kind of nice to have that there it's a little more subtle so you know if you're traveling with it it doesn't necessarily look like a security case because you don't have big locks on the outside now i will say these combination locks are only you know limited amount of combinations you know a thousand combinations so someone with some time could go through and keep rolling through them and, and and figure out what the combination is so this is something that i would not call super secure but secure enough to keep you know curious people from just uh, opening it up you know taking a peek inside i also like the fact that we have um as we open it up this little little ridge that you know it's like a rubber ridge that kind of goes over this i feel like that'll give me a little bit of weatherproofing i don't know if that this is considered you know waterproof or anything but i like the fact that it does a little bit to seal that there so you know if you're getting adverse weather conditions you don't have to maybe worry as much about water getting inside inside here we have the plastic so your interior dimensions are going to be a little bit smaller than the exterior dimensions you can see the plastic is rolled over there uh it's the same on both sides it has a nice filled out look and that's because of this foam in here which actually has a little bit of a velvety look on the top here you have this foam right there and on the bottom it looks like you have the same foam but this is actually a pick and pluck foam so it looks like a solid piece there but if i flip it over you can see how it is perforated here 
And so you can kind of pick out the foam blocks so that if you had something specifically that you wanted to put in here, say, you know, a squirt gun or, you know, um, specific tools or electronics, you could pick out the foam in just the places that you want it to be recessed so that you have a dedicated compartment. Now, I will show you that this foam compresses a decent amount here, too. So let's say I just took this and I put it in here. It's going to kind of squeeze it together and it's not going to allow it to move around, which is kind of nice, too. But like I said, you can pick this foam out. Pick and pluck foam. I'm kind of of two minds about it. I like the fact that I can cut these out exactly the way I want but in some cases they start to fall apart if you get too complex with the shape so I wouldn't mind this just being a regular piece of foam and then I have to use like a box cut or something to cut out my own shape and then you can see on the bottom here we have another piece of foam again a, just a thinner piece of foam that's glued into place to give yourself a little protection on the top and the bottom now I do want to give you some interior dimensions here and I'm going to give you a few of them so total side to side here is going to be um, I'm going to call it 14 inches. It's, it's almost exactly 14 inches side to side. Now I'm going to give you the dimensions from the two edges here that are furthest apart. That's nine inches, but on this interior space where the handle and the lock is, that is six and three quarters inches, actually, maybe just a smidge smaller. And then interior dimension wise, you know, I'm not going to compress the foam here, but that's going to be about an inch and a quarter up there. But then as you can see, it will compress probably another quarter an inch at least and then up at the top this will compress oh man that looks like almost three quarters of an inch so you can have some pretty thick things in here i would call it up to an inch and a half maybe and you'll probably have no problem you know closing up the case and in fact having a little bit of pressure on whatever you're putting in there is just going to keep it from moving around so i really like this case again you can customize it it doesn't look like a valuables case it doesn't look like those halliburton cases like a silver case that screams mafioso or secret agent or something like that it's just kind of black it actually looks a little bit to me like you know a camera case or an av equipment case something like that and so it's not going to be as obvious and put you in maybe a bad situation and on top of that you can lock it uh, store it in your office whatever and i just love the fact that it's a little larger so if you had things like a large amount of documents valuables jewelry precious metals your lightsaber collection whatever you can put them in here. So this Nigiri case from Italy, I think is a great case all around. Not super inexpensive, over a hundred bucks, but I'll put a link to it in the description if you want to pick one up. Peter Von Panda, out. <laughs>